So in my last set of videos, I went through and I created this uh, contact management system. Uh, some of the things that I didn't cover, um, which I did in another video, was uh, securing the information and, and uh, escaping the user input for any of your fields that are going uh, into a query string. So uh, in this video, I'm actually going to show you how to secure your applications using session tokens. I take a different approach because I'm a little paranoid, I guess you could say. And uh, rather than using one session token th for your entire session, I use uh, or generate one on the fly every time you come to a form. Um, and what this does is it creates a more, uh, I guess you could say a, a more secure environment because you're not, you don't have the chance of having the same session token out there that someone can hijack and use against you. Um, you get a new one every time you get a form. Um, so if we look at our code right now on our login page, we're not going to see a, or we shouldn't see a token in any of our um, input fields here. And really all that a token is, uh, is in one of our forms is it's a hidden field that has a random value that's generated um, and I'll show you how to create those here in this video uh, so I'm going to jump over to my code and in our functions page I'm going to create a couple functions the first one's going to be called function gen token and this is just going to handle our token generation um, we're going to do another function call this one check token and we're going to pass in the actual token from the po uh, for, that is post or, or from the post uh, value. And then we're also going to do a function get token field, and this is just going to handle generating the token input in one of our forms. And the last one that we're going to add function is destroy token. And this is just going to get rid of our current token value in our session array. Um, so I'm going to go up to the top in gen token. We're going to check if our session underscore oops underscore session user token. If that is not set, then we want to create a new token. All that we're going to be doing is session user token. Oops. Is equal to, and I'm just going to use an MD5 hash on this. Uh, you don't have to, you can actually just use the unique ID, but I like using the MD5 hash on top of it. So I'm going to do MD5, you, whoops, unique ID close that off and that's going to generate a nicely formatted um, session token for us and that like I said that's going to be completely random the unique ID creates a random string and then the MD5 hash is just going to encode that and uh, just going to make it a little a lot harder for someone to decrypt it um, and again this is getting created every time we come to a form so it's going to be virtually impossible for someone to hijack it and then keep on reusing that throughout the session so uh, in our check token, we are going to do if dollar sign token, the value that we're passing in, is not equal to session user token. And I can already see that I have the file that I'm going to be created or using already created. So I'm just going to delete that after I get done creating this function. Um, but inside of this, if our two token values, the one that we have stored in our session and the one that we have in that's being passed over from our form, if those don't match, then we're going to be sending the person to a new location. And that's just going to be our 404.php page. And then I'm going to run exit after this and that's just going to kill any processes that are that are going to happen after this so it's just going to head them over or send them over to the 404 page and not run anything else beyond that all right and like i said i'm going to delete that 404 page just so that way we don't have any confusion click okay uh, let's see and then get token field and all that we're going to be doing is returning a string that has our input type is equal to hidden Uh, name is equal to token and you can name this whatever you want if uh, if you want to use I don't know what you would use but uh, if you want to obfuscate that so that way it's only known to you 
then definitely do it that way, uh, but token should work fine. Uh, so we'll do value is equal to, and then we're going to open and close these single quotes, so that way we can get out of our uh, string, and we're going to pass in session user token. All right, so now value, and then we're just going to close out that uh, input field. And that is just going to be called every time we want to add that token field to our input forms. All right, and then the last uh, function that I have here is the destroy token. And that's just going to get rid of the information that we have in our uh, session user token variable. Uh, so we're going to unset session user token. And that should take care of destroying that value for us. So it doesn't exist anymore. Uh, so we're going to save that. And now we're going to jump over to our forms. Uh, and we need to modify our forms. So what we need to do, go right up to the top here, is we need to call that gen token function uh, at the beginning of each of our forms. So that way it makes sure that there is a token already uh, created. Um, if I go back over to my functions page here and gen token, uh, I'll explain this again, which I need a closing parenthesis here. Um, but it's checking if our user token session or session user token variable is already created. If it is, then it's just going to completely skip over this and it's going to use the one that is created. Otherwise, it's going to create one for us. Uh, so in our forms, we're going to use get token at the beginning of each of our forms here. And I apologize for repeating myself there. I just wanted to make sure it was clear. And that's it. So we have three forms we have at the beginning of each of those. And we are also going to go over to our functions. And we're going to call, I guess I, I don't really need that. Uh, but I want to uh, use the get token field uh, function. So I'm going to call that somewhere within my form tags. So it's PHP echo. Oops, get token form, oops, field. And we're gonna close out the parentheses, or close out the PHP script. So I'm gonna copy that, and like I said, as long as it's within your form tag, then you should be all set. Uh, I like to put it towards the end, but you can put it wherever you would like. And I will do the same thing on the last one. So now, if I refresh my page, and I look at my code, I should have a token value in here. And you'll see the token has just a random number um, that's encrypted. And if I were to modify that, then we should get an error. Um, but right now we're not going to because there's no real check happening. And what we need to do is we need to go into our functions code again and go down to where we're doing our processing stuff. Uh, so we're gonna do, whoops, check token. And we're going to pass in our post token just to do the check. And since those are all going to be the same throughout our application, or at least the post token information is all going to be the same, we can copy this into each of our functions. And I'm only going with the ones that are save and update functions because you don't really need a token on when you're getting information out of the database, which is the, the last uh, functions that I have. So save category, yeah, these ones here, like the function get categories, you don't really need a token for that because you're just getting information out of the, out of the database and there's really no harm that you can do to your application and getting information out of, the out of the database unless they were to be able to modify your query. Um, this one is just a straight query. They can't modify it in any way, so you're fine there. Uh, but we are passing in this cat ID. Um, it, it could become a problem where you're, they may be trying to pull uh, information out of the database that could be harmful. And using this int val, it just makes sure that that's just an integer and it's not going to have any other information in that variable. So that makes it safe to use here. Um, but like I said, I covered that in one of the previous videos, uh, so watch that if you have any questions about uh, using int val or MySQL real escape string. Um, 
If you like this video, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Be the first to get notifications on new video posts, ask questions, and engage with other users.